So good evening, guys, and uh, uh, I am very proud to introduce Dr. Shonak. He uh, he scored secured rank two uh, in both AML and CML. So Shonak, can you just give a, a brief introduction and uh, let me know how you feel now? Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, I'm Dr. Shonak Umesh Lohite. Uh, I did my MBBS from PJ Medical College, Pune. I did my MD in general medicine from KM Hospital, Mumbai, and I'm feeling thrilled, exhilarated, and relieved that finally the results are out. And I secured a good rank. And which year did you uh, did you clear your MD? Yeah, I cleared this year. Like, I finished my exam in July 2023. And you got a reasonably good rank in actually really good rank in NEET also. And yeah, uh, yeah. I <laughs> so how was like uh, like how was the preparation? Like basically, how did you prepare for your NEET and INA? Did you have separate plans or you were going a single plan and studying? How was it? I initially had a single plan for studying. Uh, I was not fixated on just doing neurology, I had some other options as well. And I had taken my OC subscription, I think, since Jan. And uh, in addition to reading Harrison, my main uh, material for preparation, even for my MD theory exams, was narrow notes. Plus, uh, important thing from Harrison. I, it was not possible for me to read the entire Harrison, which some people managed to do, but I was not able to. So that was my basis of preparation. Uh, after my uh, need SS exams, I had some days after my DMD exam to prepare. So for that, I solely use narrow notes uh, for preparing as well as for questions like the MCQs for answering. So that's my basis of preparation. So uh, marrow notes means did you use like uh, your marrow medicine notes or you used uh, the SS notes? Uh, the, the SS notes, the SS notes, uh, like all the specialties. So I used to watch so the videos also plus the notes. How did it help you for your like for your MD? MD exam, you told that you prepared with that even for your MD yeah. exams also. Usually residency where I have done it is very hectic and many times you don't really get to read the standard textbooks from cover to cover. There are certain topics you have to cover from the standard textbooks. But for the rest of the topics and to write the answer from a big topic, it is very easy if you refer to narrow videos. So you can get a small, uh, a succinct version of what is to be written, what is to be expected in the exam. So the ability to write the answer improves and sometimes even for patient management also you can look at the diagnostic algorithms. So for me, Mano was very, very helpful even for my MD exams, especially for my MD exams. Yeah, and uh, how was your preparation for any difference in planning for your INSS and NEET? Both you did the same way or you have any different plan? Yes, Abhi, of course, because INSS, I did give the INSS before. So I had not cleared my MD, but I just gave it as a preparation in the earlier session. I had qualified for the interview, so for that again I used Maro notes, Maro videos. Uh, but because I did not have my MD degree, I could not. Uh, I gave the interview, but I did not get a rank. So I have been preparing for neurology for about the last six months, in addition to studying for MD medicine, but special attention to neurology. Like there are 102 videos, I have watched all of them, including the notes of the videos. Why neurology? Why? What made you interested towards neurology? So, uh, firstly, uh, I kind of still consists of more of an OPD based branch. I know there are interventions, but I am not that particularly keen on doing interventions. It is a little chill branch and plus it is very analytical, almost like mathematics. So we can localize a lesion and then you can point towards the etiology just by taking history and then some basic investigations. So the fun and diagnosis is what drew me to neurology. Yeah. And uh, like you cleared your need, then you cleared your uh, INI. And how was the stage two preparation? How was that? Did you attend our sessions for stage two preparation? Whether it was helpful to you? Yes, sir. Um, I attended your mock interviews plus some other interviews as well. Um, uh, I feel uh, the level of questions which you asked in the mock interviews, in the actual exam, the, not the mock, the real exam, were kind of simpler rather than what was being discussed. That was very surprising for me. Actually, I was relieved. I don't know if that is just for me or for other students as well. So rather than checking the difficulty of the questions, they were looking for the approach to the questions. Is what yeah. my opinion. Is. Yeah. This time, actually, when I when I when, when I collected the questions from the, the those were candidates attended, uh, it was much easy. It was actually it is evolving. Like the first time, it was total confusion. Second time, it was more difficult because some of the candidates got really tough questions. Some got very easy questions, and this time it is from I had collected from some five six people and it is almost like same type of questions like it is basically based on more of the approach how you use your aptitude and how you will go forward nothing nothing like uh, very high fi things they were very basic things they were asking yes and uh, how did you use your uh, ma marrow notes you told you were you were doing with the marrow notes and marrow videos for your preparation so how did you use that we have one two more parts one is uh, our MCQ discussion done by the faculties and the second part is uh, where you have the question back. 
So how would you use those things? So usually, um, whenever I used to study, watch a video of a particular topic, and then see the notes which are attached to the video simultaneously. And once that was done, I used to immediately solve the questions. So rather than coming back to the topic later, I used to finish the topic there and then. And uh, sometimes uh, the content which was taught in the videos and the question which I asked was slightly different. A higher level uh, nature of questions is usually asked. So I make those necessary additions to the notes which are there, and that is how I do for every topic. And there are certain topics that are like very challenging. <coughs> It's my UG days, like dementia or movement disorders, which I think everyone struggles with. So I really wanted a clear cut, concise version as to how to approach those topics. I had read Harrison for these topics, but still I was struggling with them. So I think the succinct version as to how do you reach or how do you tackle these particular topics is very helpful for me. And how? again, stroke management again, someone to mention one particular video because there's a lot of confusion even when we are managing cases back in the hospital. Even if the ideal guidelines are not being followed. But uh, what is to be done next in every particular scenario uh, that I could really understand because of the video. And uh, like you were telling that you watched the narrow narrow videos videos most of videos like which video did you did did you did you like which video did you like and do you have any suggestions to make any changes you want to make and uh, which one did sir, you like and why? I think uh, the video which I liked the most was the topic which I struggled with the most and that is approach to dementia. Because I have, I used to be confused a lot doing them because all the terms come in that genetics come and get confused. So whenever they ask a question, it's difficult. Uh, one more topic which I'd like to highlight was Parkinson plus syndromes because there are like certain case weakness for each of the Parkinson plus syndromes, but still slight atypical questions were asked. Like I usually ask, for example, in this time, and uh, they had asked us anteropolysis present which condition. So that was yeah. something which I did not really know. I remember only remember the questions which I've got wrong. So that is them biased towards it. But I really liked your dementia videos and stroke, secondary management, and what is non-trial diffuse trial because that is something which everyone struggles with. And I, I think the videos really help me for those topics. Same for MS, multiple sclerosis, differentiation between MS and your NMO spectrum uh, and mom disorders. That was a very nice video. Yeah, that is actually one one, one area, like two areas. One is what you told telling like atypical parkinson's and uh, from ms they used to keep clinical questions in all the last ina or neat they used to keep a clinical question and there will be some clinical clue to differentiate that will help you to answer that actually requires uh, basic uh, good knowledge about the subject in that area yes sir and and uh, like, uh, like what do you have do you have any any other plans like uh, to because you were inclined to neurology maybe during the course early because now, nowadays we find very few candidates who want to take neurology because many of them want to take nowadays actually i think the, the uh, there is a change in shift in attitude like they want to take more of uh, like rheumatology endocrinology uh, maybe the reason why because is uh, one is they have more glamour and they have more uh, like uh, it has less more work life balance will be there in such departments Maybe that is also the reason because I, I I seem to like that endocrinology has more of life work life balance when compared to any other subject. So, uh, so uh, what anything inspired you to become a neurologist? Anything inspired like in when you joined the MD before joining MD or after joining MD? Where did you have anything which inspired you? So, uh, naturally, before even joining my MBBS, there is some degree of fascination regarding the brain and how it works. And while doing MBBS, that fascination only increased. Now I had considered endocrinology as one of the branches, but when I read through, I did not find it interesting. Or now that is just my opinion. I'm not saying it that for the subject, but I did not find it interesting enough for me to pursue it as my main career. And I was that was not the case for neurology. Even studying theory of neurology is fun for me. So uh, no altruistic motive behind it, but because of the fact that I enjoy reading about neurology and then applying it in the patients. So now currently I'm working as a SR in my same ICU. So I have many neurology cases which I get to apply what I've read, even for these theory exams. So that is what something gives me joy. That's why I've chosen neurology, and I'm glad I've chosen that subject. Yeah, actually, and for neuro, you like neuro is one subject you have maximum exposure during the MD days. Any place you go in MD, uh, maximum exposure is for neuro and cardio, because neuro is a long case, and you will see plenty of neurology cases in wards. And neuro is something which needs a lot of clinical skill, unlike any other subject. Uh, same thing happened to me also. Like I also like neurology just because of the reason that I don't find uh, other subjects uh, that much interesting because maybe endocrinology I didn't see much in my uh, MD days because MD cases and endocrinology and other subjects I don't see much cases. Most of the cases will be neuro or cardio. That is what happens in most MD places. And with that, do you have any plans for like when you are joining a central institute that to aims 
uh, you might have some backup plans like you have you are planning to go with this area of neurology like some of them are want to go with intervention of stroke because there is a booming area anything like that in your back 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 of your mind i have not decided that for sure as of now but i am slightly intervention averse but maybe that will change during the course of my residency i have some interest in epilepsy i'm interested in movement disorders let's see yeah that is actually uh, neurology is was a non interventional branch till maybe 3 4 years back now it is inclining towards intervention but that is totally different area when you go to intervention you will be more like a cardiologist like a spectrum and yes. non interventional area is more of a practical general neurology area so uh, all the best for the future and I, I and i will give you my number later and you can yes. keep in touch with me and uh, all the best for the future and do well and you definitely will find some way when you join aims you will see all the legends in each field and you will have the luck to work with them and you will then you will can decide which speciality if you want to go or if you don't want to go you can there is not it is not a must to take any speciality right now because uh, general neurology the beauty of general neurology is something which is totally different from any speci- any 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 stroke or any intervention or any movement disorder nothing can give the beauty of general neurology That is my personal yes. opinion. Uh, you can decide it later. Yes, okay. for sure. And I'd just like to thank you for your help, and you have a significant contribution, piquing my interest for neurology because I really enjoy watching your videos. So thanks a lot for that. And thank you so much. And I will actually, I wanted to ask you once any suggestions you want to make some changes in our pattern or anything, in especially in neurology. So no, I think uh, just one thing. There are some videos for which uh, the uh, the written part is not there, like MCQ. No, it's not. So if that is included, for example, uh, epilepsy and encephalopathy is a later part discussion. Movement is not a later part. So if that is included, it will be like it will be a complete set. I feel. Yeah, yeah. we'll we'll try to include that, and we will be and adding new delirium as a topic also. I feel because um, many people in ICU see delirium, so an approach delirium. to delirium. about the topic like that, if you want to add just for clinical interest, I think it will be wonderful yeah. for you. We, we, we had a plan like that. Do something for a, a short videos. on some clinically important relevant topics that also we are planning and uh, we will make some few changes in the, uh, the, the 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 present videos also and we'll try to add those things which are missing because we used to i used to collect this uh, back from the, uh, the students because we need to improve every year we cannot provide the same thing every year you have to improve every day yes yeah thank you, thank so, you so much, much. Oh, just one more thing, one more, uh, one more video on cortical sinus thrombosis because we see a lot of cases of cortical sinus thrombosis. Yeah. But many times, it's a question whether they have cortical sinus thrombosis plus stroke, ischemic infarction. Are we supposed to start anticoagulation or not? What is it? We don't really understand. So, if you make a video, that would be very helpful. Yeah, actually, the attack shot I had discussed only in one or two questions in uh, yeah. somewhere in the aneurysm session of yeah. MCQ. Yeah, the last video of stroke. Yeah, last some session. I'll, I'll try to add those things and actually these things. i also noted out certain things because the length of the video is increasing because neurology is such a vast content you, you cannot reduce anything in neurology because neurology is one subject which is which requires lot of stuff to know it is like you have to have super knowledge to learn neurology and somebody who love to read love to uh, love to practice and love to read love to be clinician uh, neurology is the best thing yes yes so uh, all the best thank you for coming for the interview and uh, do well i am i definitely know that you will do well be in touch yes sir thank you sir